Into this video, I want to take a quick second to point out three common mistakes that I see people make when drawing on their iPad. If you can avoid them, you will be more comfortable, produce better drawings, and work more effectively. My name is Henry, and I help architects save time, draw more confidently, and be more creative using the iPad. So let's get into it. Number one on my list is posture. And you might wonder, what more do you need to know? Because at this point in your life, you are probably aware some of the best practices for sitting down, writing, and drawing. Well, drawing on the iPad is a little different than using the traditional pencil and pen. For starters, you can zoom in and out of your digital canvas, so you don't have to get really close to the physical paper in order to see something bigger. Surprisingly, not everyone takes advantage of this. Secondly, when we are working with physical trace, with drafting dots, tape on the table, we often will rotate our body in order to get to a very comfortable position for our hands, but not necessarily comfortable for the rest of our body if we were to hold this position for a prolonged period of time. But instead, on the iPad, you can just rotate the digital canvas to get to an angle that allows you to draw at the most optimum position instead of physically rotating the iPad like you would with physical trace paper. Lastly, to help you work even more economically, especially if you're going to be sitting down with your head hunched over for a long period of time, I recommend getting yourself a propped up drawing stand so you can sit more up straight without putting too much strain on your neck. What I use is called a Sketchboard Pro. It allows you to put your iPad flush to the board and gives you a couple more inches on the side for your arms to rest on. And trust me, this is way more comfortable than drawing on a flat surface. Number two on my list is having a screen protector. It literally makes a day and night difference when you are drawing on the iPad. Despite the beautiful iPad screen that Apple is very proud of, Drawing on glass can be a little weird at first, especially if it's your first time. You will notice right away it's very slippery and it doesn't have the tactile quality when you're pulling your real pencil across the paper, which can impact your drawing experience and the final result. That's why you have to apply a screen protector, but not any screen protector. It needs to be a matte protector with some frictions built into it so it can effectively slow down your stroke and make it feel like you're drawing more on a real paper surface. I have a couple of recommendations below for what I use, but feel free to do your own research. Most mass screen protector should work, but do note that it will reduce some of the screen fidelity, so your iPad screen isn't going to look as vibrant without it. That's your choice. For me, it's well worth a trade-off, as I primarily use my iPad to draw and not much more. The last mistake that I see people do is not staying organized. If the iPad is going to replace your reliance on paper and needing to carry a bunch of documents with you, then you absolutely need to have an adequate digital structure so you know where to find things. This applies to both where your files are stored and how your drawings is organized. For this, I will give you a quick demo inside my own Procreate app where I keep all my work and drawings, whereas before, they exist in various notebooks, on trace paper, and random papers around the office or home. You can see in Procreate, all my drawings are organized by their prospective folders, and this is very easy to do. And you can tap to go in and browse through each drawing without opening it, which is a nice feature. Here I am inside a drawing file. You can see in my layer structure, each layer and folder is carefully named and nested appropriately based on their functions. This is super important, especially when you're working with multiple options and design iterations. Oftentimes, I need to come back to a drawing that I worked on for a few weeks or even months back. And it's important to understand where I've kept my drawings so I can make updates and edits quickly. Obviously, there are a lot more that goes into this. So if you are interested in seeing how I work, what my unique approach to sketching in a professional architecture environment is like, I have a free three-part workshop for architects and interior designers on my website showing you many of my behind-the-scenes workflows. Just click the link below to sign up. Otherwise, I will see you next time.